good morning. We warmly invite you to join us online for International Virtual Conference on Clinical Sciences 2022. Annual Arts and Science College, Pursuit, Knowledge is Power, Knowledge Teacher Skills, Skill Defines Excellence. To achieve excellence, a college focused to explore insights on re recent advancements, new equipments, new techniques, learn from thought leaders, and get a network with a great line of speakers. Let's start today with Tamil Taiwata. the world's greatest wireless connection. Let us start the program with a prayer song by a college student. I'd like to call our department head, Dr. L. Parimala, to deliver welcome address and a short note about the conference. Parimala, ma'am, unmute, ma'am. Parimala, ma'am, unmute, unmute, and speak. Happy morning to everyone gathered here. I feel privileged and honored to give a welcome address in this virtual auspicious occasion. I welcome our beloved chairman, Chavalier, Dr. N.R.D. Dalapalan, sir, our dynamic uh, secretary, 
M, uh, Mr. Uh, NRD Prem Kumar, our mentor and guide, Joint Secretary, Dr. P. E. R. Prem Chand, our energetic and enthusiastic principal, ma'am, Dr. Inita Ebensi, Lebanon, and our supportive vice principal, Mrs. Jafia Salaman, heads of various de departments, staff, and students of our college. A very warm welcome to all the renowned speakers and delegates who have joined with us and uh, took their valuable time and join us today to be a part of this conference. We are honored to have you all with us. Sir. I feel extremely delighted to welcome all the participants who have joined us today on virtual mode through YouTube Live. I guarantee that the conference will be productive and worth your precious time. The main aim of the conference is to bring together the leading academic scientists, researchers, and research scholars to exchange and share their experiences and research results on all aspects of chemical sciences. This is the second international conference, uh, virtual conference organized by the Department of Chemistry to be held on 8th and 9th February, 2022. The conference has five sessions. The first session, resource person is uh, Dr. S. Agnes Mary, Young Scientist, Department of Health Research, Central Leather Research Institute, Chennai. She will be delivering her talk on the topic uh, polymer, polymeric hemodialysis membranes for renal disease. Second session, session invited talk will be delivered by Dr. N. Rajendran, Associate Professor, Department of Polymer Science, University of Madras, Gindi Campus, Chennai. His topic would be recent developments on the synthesis of macromolecules, stabilized noble metal nanostructures and their chemical and biological applications. Third session, resource person is Dr. Kamaraj Satu, Assistant Professor, Department of Biotechnology, Periyar University, PG Extension Center, Dharmaburi. His topic is polyphenols and their effects on enzyme inhibition, a solution for serious disease. Fourth topic resource person is Dr. Ilakia, Assistant Professor, PG and Research Department of Chemistry, uh, Sri Sarada College for Women, Salem. Her topic is uh, electrospun nanofibers membrane for water purification treatment. Last session is uh, session five. The resource person is Dr. A.K. Prasannan, Assistant Professor, Department of Material Science and Engineering. Taiwan. His topic is recent trends in bio-inspired materials. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now, I call our beloved principal, Dr. Inita Lebanon Ebensi, to deliver inaugural address. Happy morning to one and all present in this online virtual international conference. On behalf of the management, our chairman, Chevalier Dr. N. R. Dhanabolan, our secretary, Mr. Prem Kumar, our joint secretary, Dr. P. E. R. Prem Chand, and all department faculty members, I welcome one and all to this virtual conference. A special word of appreciation to the head, Dr. Parimala, and her dedicated team of faculty members for organizing this two-day virtual conference in an international level. So we are very proud of you, dear faculty members, for taking all initiative to make this happen. So you have seen to this, even during pandemic situation, the sharing of knowledge has not stopped. So distance is not a matter. You have kept everyone connected through this wonderful platform. So my special appreciation to you, dear team. And I also uh, thank Mr. Yuvanesh Kumar and the administrative officer, Mr. Lohu, for taking all initiative to give the administrative support in conducting this seminar. And as you could see, 
the topic is regarding the recent techniques so all topics whatever they have chosen is regarding the recent development in the chemical sciences it is regarding the chemical sciences and they have also touched upon the application part of it so that is something that i admired when i saw all the topics so they have taken the recent development of synthesis of macromolecules and not withstanding the recent development the next level wherever science comes it should definitely complete only with the application part of it so they have touched upon the application like how it can be used in chemical and biological basis and the other topic where even in cancer treatment how it would, how it could be applied so any recent advance whatever the topic they have chosen is uh, directly linked with the application so that is one thing i admired in all the topics and similarly we have various resource persons who are addressing uh, in this conference we have uh, renowned speakers from india as well as abroad so a warm welcome uh, for being with us and we have also uh, many participants from india and abroad for paper presentation and e poster presentation a special word of welcome to one and all present from india as well as from abroad and also from our area that is chennai so i thank the department for taking all initiatives and uh, during paper presentation also the students kindly um, uh, you would have completed like only a part of the research work you would have presented but don't stop with this presentation publish it as a research article and take your research to the next level and go even for patenting so that your research becomes complete and research never becomes complete because it is a continuous process keep yourself updated and that only can bring bright changes in this society so i request all the students to make use of this platform in sharing your knowledge thank you one and all thank you thank you ma'am now a hod will release the proceedings of international virtual conferences on chemical sciences to be put to virtually now we are releasing the conference proceedings virtually we have obtained uh, papers from all over india from uh, uh, from other countries also the participants will be presenting their uh, papers uh, uh, during uh, the sessions has been uh, uh, shared in the whatsapp group so this is our conference proceeding so forward is given by dr anand kumar pandi assistant professor department of chemist department of biochemistry from aims jharkhand and uh, we have received messages from our chairman dr nr dadapalan sir and from vice chairman uh, mrs violet dadapalan from our secretary from our secretary mr nrd prem kumar from our joint secretary dr p e r prem chand and from our principal ma'am dr enita lebanon ebensi our vice vice principal ma'am mrs jafia solomon and message from the convener
our conference team, organizing committee, and this schedule. And presentations from the participants, oral and poster presentation so far, what we have received. So these candidates will be presenting their paper during the session, presentation session, today and tomorrow. These are the abstracts re received from participants. So dear participants, kindly attend all the sessions and uh, send feedback so that you will be receiving the participation certificate. The presenters will be getting their presentation certificate. Uh, we are going to award best presentation, first prize, second prize, and third prize. In the valedictory, we will be announcing it. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We share the proceedings in PDF format in WhatsApp group. It's a warm and sincere thanks on behalf of IQC, Department of Chemistry, and all of us here today. I thank Principal, Vice Principal, for stimulating and timely remarks and gracious participation in this inaugural session. Thank you, ma'am. I'd like to call Dr. P. Dairi Lakshmi, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, to introduce the guest speaker of session one, Dr. S. Agnes Murray. Thank you, Divya ma'am. Respected dignitaries on the dais and, and off of the dais, faculty members and dear students, very good morning to you all. I am P. Gaya Lakshmi, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, Anne Violet Arts and Science College, with immense pleasure, is going to introduce a guest speaker of the session, Dr. S. Agnes Mary, Young Scientist Fellow, Indian Council of Medical Research, Department of Health Research, Center for Academic and Research, CSIR, CLRI, who is going to talk to us about the polymeric hemodialysis membrane for renal diseases. Polymer Let me introduce the speaker of this session, Dr. S. Agnes Muri. She did her BSc 2003 to 2006 at Malankara Catholic College, Mariagiri. Kanyakumari district and uh, finished her MSc biochemical technology in biochemistry from 2006 to 2008, Mutayamal College of Arts and Science, Namakal. And she finished her doctorate in the year 2017 from Anna University. And the thesis has been entitled as a study on herbal drug incorporated electrospun nanofibrous mats for wound dressing applications. Her area of interest is on electro spinning, centrifugal spinning, wound healing, biomedic material and its biomedical applications. Her achievements and awards include UGC Maulana Azad National Fellow in the year 2010. Award, she has been awarded Women Scientist Fellow as Uza A DST in the year 2011. In the year 2014, she has been awarded UGC Basic Research Fellowship. Then in the year 2017, she joined as a National Post Doctoral Fellow NPDF DST Serb. Now she has been working as Young Scientist Fellow in ICMR DHR from 2020 onwards. It added to that, she has nearly eight publications.
with this brief introduction i invite dr s agnes mary to take over the session the session is over to you ma'am Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You're audible and your screen shared, ma'am. You can go ahead. Yeah. Thank you for the introduction, Dr. Daiti Lakshmi. And uh, I'm Agnes. I'm going to present the topic uh, polymeric hemodialysis membrane for renal diseases. If we you see one of the major health problems suffered by many people all over the world is the renal disease or the renal failure. If we see there is a tremendous increase in the number of populations, uh, that is, uh, number of patients with uh, uh, kidney disease is being increased significantly. Approximately about 10 percentage of the world population is reported to suffer from chronic disease, and with uh, one quarter is in very critical stage. If we on a report that about uh, in China and USA, top among the uh, kidney failure disease, and then comes the Japan and India and Brazil. It is also projected that the global dialysis population is going to continue year by year, and it may, it may reach about 5 million by 2025. So dialysis is the process by which it is it is a life-saving process treatment, and it is approximately saving a people over the world, around 3 million people. And uh, what is dialysis? Dialysis, as we all know, dialysis is the uh, uh, diffusion process. Uh, and dialysis is the word that derived from the Greek word dia, meaning through, and lysis, which means loosening or splitting. Uh, the, in the hemodialysis process, it, the three processes are combined, diffusion, osmosis, and ultrafiltration. And uh, Diffusion is a separation of molecules from higher concentration to the lower concentration. And osmosis is the reverse process of the diffusion, that is from higher to lower concentration. And the ultrafiltration, that is removal of or uh, separation of higher, mole uh, higher molecules through a semi papillary membrane, that is uh, separation from higher molecules to lower molecules. Uh, this is a, a small... Uh, uh, a biochemical process by which which happens in this by in the laboratory scale we will do that is the sample when the sample is added to a semi-permeable membrane uh, that has a specific pore size or specific cutoff the molecules will be diffusing from this membrane to a, uh, to the uh, lower concentration when at equilibrium we have to change the sample uh, water so that our desired protein or any other sample which can be uh, separated from the uh, complete mixture of a sample uh, so, going as we have uh, known about the hemodialysis, uh, the hemodialysis is an external process, and this is kidney is the main organ which uh, which is which, which is responsible for the removal of metabolic toxins created by our body. We consume the food, uh, the energy is absorbed by the body, and the metabolic toxins ex excreted is excreted through the kidney. And that uh, kidney, the main function of the kidney is to maintain the normal uh, pH of the blood that is by it will maintain the pH of the blood by uh, keeping the right amount of salt or uh, potassium like potassium or uh, sodium in the body it remove the body waste level and maintains the body pressure blood blood pressure and the uh, and keeps the body uh, bones very strong that the when the blood enters into the kidney through the artery the kidney and the waste are removed to the or sent to the bladder and the filtered blood is returned again to the body hemodialysis is the same process which is happening externally externally without the, with the without when our body uh, when the body's kidney does not does its function so if the body uh, kidney is uh, only function around 10 to 15 percentage it is functioning the person is required to go for alternative treatment that is by replacement of uh, kidney that is transplantation or it, they, they should undergo dialysis process. Uh, dialysis process, the dialyzer is a man-made membrane or artificial kidney and uh, which, is, which is 
done externally there are two types of processes which is uh, hemodialysis and the peritoneal dialysis hemodialysis is uh, through the av graft or central venous catheter or av fistula whereas peritoneal dialysis is done by uh, the peritone but done, done at the peritoneum of in the present in the abdomen and do using a semi permeable membrane who need dialysis the person the person who is not uh, uh, the who needs uh, dialysis dialysis becomes very severe when the kidney is no more function This is a typical example of the hemodialysis, which is happening. That is normal hemodialysis, and this is the example of the peritoneal dialysis. And if we see membranes used for hemodialysis begin from early stages. If we look into the brief history of the hemodialysis membrane evolution, uh, it is quite interesting. And the word dialysis was first described by Thomas Graham in 1884 during the 19th century. he used a uh, wide opened open ended bell which was covered with a uh, ox bladder membrane he filled it with urine and suspended it in, in, into the uh, vessel containing distilled water it was boiled to dryness to so do so to understand the permeation uh, property uh, the dialysate uh, so he came to know that after the process the urea and sodium chloride were permeated out from with this he concluded along with the physician called rested right uh, this would be the basic treatment for basis for the treatment of renal failure and at that time itself they have they concluded that it may take around 60 years of time to reach uh, the public person for the complete renal treatment he was all, graham was also the first person to separate the colloids and crystalloids Uh, from the in a mixture using an unta un, uh, using a parchment membrane which is an untanned skin of animals that like goat or sheep or uh, cow and uh, the process was again continued and uh, during uh, 1913 uh, the physicians abel roundtree and turner dialyzed the animals blood directing them outside the body through the semi permeable membrane called collodon this was first done in dog and this is a cellulose nitrate derivative for instance cellulose nitrate derivative derivative and it was the first polymer to be used as an artificial membrane so uh, they were the, again with along along with Ab, the doc able coined this machine as a vv diffusion membrane and but he was went on failures because uh, he there was two problems he how to overcome that is uh, by when the blood is transfused from transfused outside the body it get clotted so they used hirudin as an anticoagulant agent to prevent dialysis to prevent the clot so but uh, as it is uh, it was an uh, compound that separated from the saliva of the leeches so there is an incompatibility between the blood of humans and the leeches so it got clotted so he was getting failures and another thing is uh, the cellulose nitrate was not uh, stable so he couldn't able to use that continuously uh, for a, a particular period of time it was working after that it was getting failed so and apart uh, so they they are trying for another polymer to be used for dialysis process at in another end a, uh, a scientist called has he is also physician uh, he was again trying for the uh, dialysis process in the medic medic in his medical field he was trying uh, he was also using the same hirudin as an anticoagulant agent so but uh, uh, on the other end this heparin and the hirudin was uh, uh, you was just researched for the usage in uh, blood clotting and all so in that time uh, heparin was even uh, fixed as a good anticoagulant because uh, it didn't give that much of complication so in the seventh till sixth experiment has got failure in his uh, uh, dialysis process so six persons he tried but it was not an achievement in the seventh experiment he tried with uh, heparin and it was a, a, a achievement 
so he was the first person to introduce uh, dialysis in humans um, apart the cellulose nitrous uh, nitrate membrane was used yeah, able and has were uh, completely uh, working so that then they were trying with as the cellulose nitrate derivative was not uh, uh, that much stable they tried with the cat and rabbit intestinal uh, membrane so they they were achieving a good result uh, period of after a period of time william call from netherland uh, he was a physician he made a breakthrough in in 1945 he developed a rotatory drum model of kidney and tried same, same along with the vv diffusion method only he, he used this in 67 year old patient and uh, uh, he achieved that uh, kidney failure uh, he he was able to attain some achievement in the kidney dialysis process he also he the membranous tube made from new cellulose based material called the cellophane he used instead of uh, uh, that uh, cellulose nitrate membrane he used the cellophane membrane uh, which was used for packaging of food the blood filled with the tubes were wrapped around a wooden drum uh, that is uh, he, uh, that along to form a submerged in the dialysate solution uh, this is the typical example for the rotating drum model uh, this here that uh, blood was uh, connected from the body and this this was submerged in the dialysis solution so that the uh, solutes were coming out of the blood for the uh, to be getting cleaned the modified machines of uh, kolf and brigham he is also a physician so both of them were working and uh, this uh, this was identified as one of the um, good uh, method for dialysis process so it was uh, uh, spread worldwide and uh, and during the world war also it was used very well so uh, apart around the 1947 uh, physician nils alwal uh, he was uh, he, he was the first person to introduce ultra filtration dialysis process that is hemodialysis process he uh, as he combined the ultra filtration process he got better efficiency than better efficiency than this cold uh, rotating drum model so because he used the cellophane membranes in a used in this dialyzer which would stand um, it with the pressure it in the metal grates and this is the uh, membrane the dialysis machine which he nils used in during this his experiment and it was uh, also experimented in humans um Cole was uh, he, known as the father of dial, uh, hemodialysis and he was working on uh, improving the uh, dialyzer and he uh, created a parallel paid dialyzer called uh, uh, that is a parallel flow the here which rather than pumping the blood was uh, through the semi permeable, semi permeable membrane the blood was uh, trans uh, supported by by the uh, parallel flow dialyzer the Solution: The flow of dialysis and the blood was through the alternate membranous material, which was stacked as a parallel flow in a parallel manner. Um, also, this research was on the the other side for preparing the dialysis membrane. And uh, in 1960s in US, Scribner made a breakthrough in the field of medicine for the for the for the preparation of shunt shunt is a small opening which should be attached should attached to the patient's body at, at the arm uh, so that it will be implanted in the vein or and artery for the uh, when during dialysis the shunt is open to the atta and attached to the dialyzer for the continuous flow of the blood uh, further development was also improved this metal plate was replaced with uh, flexible materials like polymers uh, this again in the field of medicine, vascular access came into uh, effect around uh, 1966 by Michael Versica and James Camino, they fundament, which, was, which remains the fundamental for the present dialysis process. Uh, during the surgical procedure, procedure they will be uh, doing a surgical procedure in the art of the arm and uh, they, it is under the beneath the skin and it is allowed to access the vein and artery to further repeated process of dialysis this technique uh, lowered the infection rate and it is also also said that av fistula implanted for more than 30 years are still in use 
then came the cellulosic membrane there was an uh, ima imaging work with the cellulosic membranes the hydrophilic polymers are very pol uh, polar in nature and uh, there was certain uh, complications with, by using uh, cellulosic membrane cellulosic membrane to minimize the activation in the uh, activation of uh, the cellulosic membranes in the complement cascade to reduce the leukopenia the second generation of cellulosic derived materials uh, the cellulose were substituted with the cellulose acetate cellulose diacetate and triacetate this was well known as hemaphen uh, membranes uh, for the dialysis process later uh, as it uh, all the membranes gave biocompatibility issue so it a golden standard was followed to check the biocompatibility of the membranes to be used for dialysis process so uh, in 19 during 1970s uh, all, the, all the synthetic polymers came into origin uh, so if we, if we see the uh, synthetic polymer which used to, in 1970 for hemodialysis was polyacrylonitrile that is pan it is a hydrophobic material which was introduced by poland in uh, france currently these both the cellulose cellulosic membranes as well as the polymeric synthetic membranes are available in the market for the uh, hemodialysis process quantification of this dialysis is a result where nearly 70 years of joint effect of efforts of these uh, scientists and physicians which uh, made the uh, improvement of this hemodialysis membrane in the field of medicine chemistry and polymers physics and physics engineering and mathematics the combined effect of these all the fields uh, gave a good uh, report like hemodial hemodialysis membrane can, which we are using now the commonly uh, hemodialysis dialysis hemodialysis and the dialyzer uh, how come only it is the dialyzer of the hemodialysis unit is referred to as an artificial kidney it is this, uh, it is the portion which uh, the semi permeable membrane is holded and there are three types of dialyzers there are three different types of dialyzers called the plate dialyzer coil dialyzer and the hollow fiber dialyzer uh, when the synthetic polymeric uh, membranes came into uh, uh, the market uh, it became the boon for the uh, dialysis field Uh, first to this when colf introduced the uh, colf only introduced this uh, plate dialyzer membrane then it was uh, the this plate dialyzer was uh, converted to coil dialyzer now the synthetic polymers are being used for as a hollow fiber dialyzer this is the hemodialysis uh, polymer hemodialysis process setup uh, the blood when the blood is uh, taken from the body to the dialyzer it uh, the dialyzer hold that uh, membrane hol hollow fiber or any other any membrane which is which uh, ac according to our desire this we can uh, we have to according to the patient's need they will be fixing uh, then uh, it get dialyzed and it is again sent to the body uh, what are the compounds the uh, dialyzer filters if we see means urea creatinine beta 2 microglobulin and it takes it to removes the excess water to maintain the ph of the body it balances the electrolytes such as sodium potassium and bicarbonate it helps the diffusion ultra, and it the process by which diffusion and ultra filtration the membrane porosity is also an, an important uh, criteria in in the filtering of this molecule however in I, after the 1970s the dialysis treatment lasted around 12 hours uh, nowadays we, the uh, dialysis treatment is performed for 4 hours uh, during that time it was uh, one day and uh, one day two day like then it is got reduced to 12 hours during the period of 1970s when the modern membranes came into uh, the market membrane dialysis uh, membranes dialysis and dialysis machine were continuously improved and manufactured industrially in ever increasing numbers the major step towards the first uh, hollow fiber hollow fiber dialyzer was in 1964 this technology replaced until then the traditional tube membranous tubes and flat membranes uh, with a number of capillary sized hollow fiber membranes this is the uh, membranes which uh, which are used uh, in that period uh, the these are the hollow fibers or fiber type bundles 
dialysis are cat dialysis membranes are categorized based on the permeability and the sieving coefficient which they are uh, removing the solutes or microglobulins or proteins or filtering of proteins etc so normally they are divided into low flux membranes and high flux membranes both are used for acute and chronic kidney failure now in the market it is also available as polyflex membrane which are currently in the market which can filter almost all the proteins uh, microglobulins with the, with the, uh, in a required manner how uh, the properties of the requ properties required for dialysis membrane in blood the biological concerns it should be so the high in solid permeability such as urea everything it should uh, salt and all uh, it should uh, be highly permeable to the solutes and it should be highly permeable to water it should maintain a balance between water and the water permeability it should be minimum in degradation uh, so it, it should be stable and adequate adequate mechanical strength is needed when it is wet under uh, as it is in contact with blood it, it is in a wetting condition so it should maintain a mechanical strength to be wet it should be uh, the be better biocompatible it should not uh, create any immune response or uh, cascade reactions like uh, uh, so that it should be completely biocompatible uh, that uh, hemodialysis membrane uh, membranes undergo sterilization process so it should be very stable under the sterilization and it should be affordable for the normal layman also the uremic toxins in hemodialysis if once the kidney get failed uh the metabolites are originate originated in from the body metabolic reaction as uremic toxins which create the uremic syndrome and uh, the dialectic dialectic removal of this uh, uremic toxins within the molecular weight of 500 dalton that is smaller what smaller molecule and middle order molecule uh, in between 500 dalton and more than uh, 500 dalton that is a uh, higher molecule are also removed from the body once we all know that uh, kidney once the kidney is getting affected all the uremic toxins uh, get uh, accumulated in our blood the acid balance acid base balance will not be maintained electrolyte balance is also not maintained inflammation oxidative stress all the or it give uh, its effect to all the parts of the body creating the immune system system to collapse so when we uh, do with, uh, go for a dialysis process dialysis dialysate fluid is an important form, uh, solution which is required for the uh, process to carry on in the blood of hemolysis patients there is a higher concentration of waste so dialysate with a lower concentration is able to draw toxins from the blood to to uh, towards it uh, towards the dialysis flu dialysate fluid so this is the typical concentration of the dialysate fluid for dialysis process and if we see there are many polymers there are in market in the early stage dialysis membrane development uh, cuprofan commonly used membrane cellulose in an ammonia it was prepared using a cellulose ammonia copper solution followed by the precipitation in acid these polymeric membranes uh, are uh, of different materials called cellulose substituted cellulose example cellulose acetate or cellulose triacetate uh, acetate that is they are uh, combined in a 10000 bundles uh, small small uh, fibers are taken into as a uh, account as for the five hemodialysis process cellulose synthetic then synthetic polymers also there so the major disadvantage of using this uh, cellulose membranes are they create biological adverse reactions biological adverse reactions such as leukopenia and inhibition of hemogranulate metabolism it also um, re reduce the number of wbcs present in our uh, blood uh, this uh, polymeric membranes are uh, bring out into fibrous form using different uh, techniques like techniques like casting phase inversion vapor deposition extrusion sol gel process etc so in and it is uh, made and made into fibrous form and studied for their biochemical and uh, biophysical properties hollow fiber membranes hollow fiber membranes uh, have have been used in artificial kidneys in 19 i said as previously like 1960s itself it has unique advantages such as uh, when in, with respect to the cellulosic membranes uh, as this is a, it's a fibrous membrane it has a high surface area to volume ratio uh, 
uh, to, uh, to for the filtering efficiency and low end pressure drops. So uh, for it, it, with respect to ultra filtration, some of the most used polymers, polymeric materials for commercial hemodialysis membranes are polysulfone, polyether sulfone, cellulose triacetate, pan, that is polyacrylonitrile, polyamides, and eval ethylene vinyl alcohol polymer. Among these polymers, polysulfone and polyether sulfone are the most popular materials, polymer, polymeric materials, which are used in hemodialysis application because it shows less immunogenic response and better, bio, better for performance, that is, bio, in the, uh, with respect to biocompatibility, they are very comfortable. But there is a certain rejections also, but it is negligible. And uh, the, at the same time, it has outstanding ox oxidative and thermal and hydrolytic stability. Uh, uh, upon research, as the research going on, the polymers were fun the functional functionalized on the polymeric surface to achieve more uh, biocompatibility and filtering efficiency, adherence of proteins, uh, less removal of albumin proteins of uh, human albumin proteins, etc. They the polymeric sur uh, polymeric surface was uh, functionalized with the various compounds to uh, give better biocompatibility and uh, achieve better hemodialysis efficacy. Uh, from the early ages, uh, the, there are di different polymers which are used for uh, hemodialysis or uh, uh, hemodialysis in the hemodialysis membrane. Cellulose, regenerated cellulose, they are present in the flat form as well as in the hollow fiber form. Um, and polyacrylonitrile, polymethacrylate, PMMA, polymethyl methacrylate, and eval vinyl, ethylene vinyl alcohol, that is eval polysulfone and polyether sulfone polyacrylate. Um, there are various membranes which are available in the market uh, with respect to country. That is, uh, uh, there are, uh, these are the uh, dialysis which are present in the market with a uh, higher efficacy. Uh, that is, in uh, the major portion was uh, uh, dominated by the Japan. Uh, they have on a more number of membranes in the market. Uh, uh, with respect to most of them are polysulfone and polyether sulfone. There are so many complications which are faced by the uh, hemolysis uh, process. That is polymeric due to the polymeric membranes. The current hemolysis membrane create inflammation response due to the bio their biocompatibility during the blood interaction. Blood proteins with the, mem with the membrane surface, which initiates different cascade reactions and result in immune res system response also. So the four main interactions are surface activation, platelet complement and leukocyte activation, infection. Another barrier to consider is the difficulty is the important fouling and is the important process which is happening, uh, which is happening that is. The fouling process that the pores are getting blocked inside the polymeric polymeric membrane and the absorption of protein become poor so more proteins are getting uh, out of the uh, out through the dialysis or it may be blocked this so the dialysis was not efficient up to the mark due to the fouling process and the pro and the uh, poor or uh, less protein absorption the examples of blood polymer in the examples of blood polymer interaction related reactions are the ba main barriers for the dialysis process. When the body's immune system is, or get activated along with blood protein surface, it may uh, give rise to thrombogenesis. That is, it, uh, 
uh, it activate the blood clotting factors and the blood getting get clotted in the uh, dialysis tube itself it may uh, which create the adverse reaction to the during the hemodialysis process another thing is the cas complement activation complement activation in a human system is inflammatory response when the inflammatory response uh, is generated uh, the body itself uh, uh, act uh, the consider the blood itself as a uh, foreign antigen and it the um, it react against it so lipocyte activation co coagulant cascade everything will be the immune system and the uh, blood process will be completely collapsed and so this may relate, will give rise to uh, different uh, problems so when the biomaterial or a polymeric material is introduced into the uh, blood uh, blood for uh, hemodialysis process it it is getting in contact with the uh, contact phase activation and it is the it, coagulation cascade is activated and it uh, macrophages and the uh, cytokines and everything will be um, the filtration efficacy will be reduced then adhesion of activation of th thrombocytes which result in the clotting of the, the thro membrane uh, clotting of the blood to form the clots inside the membranous tube tubes so the surface modifications of the polymeric membranes were um, sulfonation and carboxylation was uh, done uh, in polyether sulfon uh, sulfon um, membranes for during the processing of the membranes uh, this in give increased hydrophilicity and negative charge to the uh, membrane polyether sulfon psf and P polylactic acid were also introduced into the um, hemodialysis process with for the removal of urea uremic toxins which control fouling when exposed to proteins so the fouling is the major disadvantage faced by number of uh, polymers which are in the market so uh, by using usage of pes and psf pla polymers for uh, with the for uremic toxins they are uh, very much controlling the fouling process blending of polymers with copolymers or a co um, block polymers uh, increase the hydrophilicity because psf and uh, pes everything all the polymers are hydrophilic hydrophobic polymers so in order to make it hydrophilic uh, they will be getting partially hydrophilic so in order to increase the hydrophilicity of these polymers they blended the uh, polymers with the co-block co -block polymers thin films from polymers and uh, nano composite membranes were also developed uh, were also developed and uh, this uh, resulted in the uh, various uh, uh, membranes with entry into the industry and electrospinning uh, also is also an one of the technique for studied for the uh, for used for the preparation of this membrane they the membranes were prepared and uh, studied for their filtration adsorption and complement activation proper, property before going for hemodialysis process this is the semi image of uh, semi image of a hollow fiber membrane Uh, with respect to frenous polysulfone hollow fiber membrane this the frenous polysulfone hollow fiber hollow fiber membrane is the uh, best membrane which is presently in the market and uh, with respect to the polymers there are advantages as well as disadvantages which have been come across uh, polysulfone and polyether sulfone has good high high thermal and mechanical stability good chemical and ph resistant the disadvantage is it is highly hydrophobic and which which, which in turn uh, cause oxidative stress uh, during the transfusion process polyacrylonitrile it is having very good biocompatibility reduced anaphylotoxin is formed uh, tox uh, reaction with the blood and it is uh, it gives the disadvantage is it gives negatively charged uh, compounds to to easily at, at attachment Uh, surface might active dialyzer reaction dialyzer in which there will be a reaction between the dialyzer membrane as well as the blood polyamides that is wide ph tolerance it has a very good ph tolerance they are high thermal they have very high thermal and mechanical stability the hydro and uh, the disadvantage is hydrophobicity it is highly hydrophobic low chemical resistance low my, beta micro beta to microglobulin sieving coefficient the important uh, uh, filtration if 
efficacy was also the respiration efficacy was uh, uh, dis, um, fixed by the removal of beta to microglobulins so p polyamides are having uh, resistance uh, resistance and very low uh, beta to microglobulin c coefficient cta that is cell triacetate membranes good solute permeability when as it is a uh, hydrophilic polymer uh, it is having a, a good permeability of solute, uh, solute such as uh, salts and uremic uh, urea related compounds and uh, symmetric membrane it is a symmetric membrane structure larger mean pore size and and uh, but when, when compared to uh, the disadvantage only disadvantages present with the cellulosic membranes are it is having very low biocompatibility and because the cellulose can form a hydrophilic uh, jelly like layer when in when it get when it get contact with the blood blood and the dialyzer so in the dialyzer it will form a jelly layer so the filtration efficacy is very less so it is it was not advised to have cellulose type acetate membranes and um, this uh, ethylene vinyl alcohol uh, polymer that is uh, large it is having advantage over larger mean pore size effective on high molecular weight toxin removal able to remove all the uremic toxins also and but when with respect to the eval the disadvantage is loss of human albumin the when filter when it is filtering uh, the dialyzer the dialyzer should uh, not uh, um, remove all the proteins which are necessary for our body so the protein loss will be also uh, taken into consideration if we see loss of albumin was very high in eval research focus this uh, hemodialysis membrane uh, as we come across the uh, uh, evolution of the hemodialysis membrane uh, there are uh, more filtration efficacy is necessary there are there are many gaps in the field of filtration efficacy hydrophobicity and hydrophilicity most of the polymers which are available in the market are uh, hydrophobic polymers to make it hydrophilic number of research works of uh, works of work are going on uh, to remove the Uh, for the attachment as well as for the filtration efficacy so sterilization process when we prepare a membrane it should undergo a sterilization process before it is uh, uh, going for the bio, uh, hemodialysis process so sterilization is by done by uh, steam uh, steam dialysis steam dialysis uh, uh, gamma radiation so all the uh, steam dialysis it should undergo somewhere around 150 to 170 degrees celsius so that much of sterilization um, resistance it should be it should overcome and another thing is loss of protein loss of proteins with respect to the human proteins which are necessary for, for the uh, human beings in the blood biocompatibility of the polymers some uh, synthetic polymers which are available are uh, highly compatible that is fda approved polymers so these can be used for uh, preparation of this dialysis membrane uh, so there is a research gap uh, in the bio improving the Uh, biocompatibility of a polymers and uh, if we see the the dialysis cost is very high the procedure itself cost very high so if we make cheap membranes with respect to uh, low cost polymers and processing uh, techniques are very cheap we can uh, give dialysis or a dialysis membrane in a cheaper cost so these are the research focus with respect to uh, hemodialysis membrane from the uh, early stages to the present stage so yeah, for, for getting an ideal dialyzer there is a certain there is a search for ideal dialyzer, dialyzer continues still thank you am i audible um, yes ma'am uh yeah i have completed my talk uh, if any questions anyone can ask yes ma'am uh divya ma'am yes sir at least ma'am i have one question 
See, is there any possibility yes. to produce biopolymeric membranes rather than having our chemical preparation? If we have a bio biopolymeric preparation, bio mode of preparation, it will be a highly compostable, bio -com uh, biodegradable like that. Is it possible? The terraces are going on with the natural polymers also. Uh, even in our lab, we are working with the collagen polymer, collagen collagen protein, which is, as we all know, it's a natural polymer. So we are- Can you uh, name with examples of biopolymers on which you are working? Collagen. We, okay, uh, we are working with collagen protein, which we are expecting. For, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you are audible, ma'am. Um, in what method or uh, in what way you can determine the pore size of the membrane, ma'am? They should exactly suit with your um, pore size of the kidney, is it not? That uh, then only it will be able to segregate the waste. So accordingly, you will decide the pore size. Which methodology? You adapt to determine the pore size of the membrane. Various technique available in the uh, various technique available to create a particular pore size. Uh, so now we are working with the casting technique as well as for with the electro spinning. So uh, we have to go for the porosity measurements from. Uh, Am I audible? I couldn't. Okay. Yes, yes, ma'am. You, you are audible, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, there is ma'am. Any, 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 any other question, ma'am? No, sir. Only those two questions I want to ask. Sir. Okay, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Now I request that you manage me, ma'am. Thank you, Divya ma'am. It is my privilege to propose a vote of thanks and acknowledge the contribution of those who are proud to make the session valuable one. I want to thank the speaker for adorning the necessary work and sharing with us this graceful occasion. My sincere thanks to the technical team for, the, for their valuable support. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Now, all are requested to join us through Zoom link.